Hello everyone and welcome back to my hypersonic passenger liner development in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. I've been working on this project off and on for a little bit now. I had made five previous videos but there's been a little bit of a gap and this is actually the successful version. We're taking off from the shuttle landing facility added by Kerbal Constructs and Real KSC and we're headed to London Heathrow Airport placed by me using Kerbal Constructs. I'll probably make another video about uh, placing stuff with Kerbal Constructs once I have a little bit more experience with it if you guys are curious about that. But uh, basically I crashed or landed this into the general area of Heathrow Airport and uh, established two runways there and now we're headed for it. I've landed at that location twice before so I've had some practice flying this. You can see uh, here we are uh, going along the east coast of the United States, we took off from Cape Canaveral, of course, and there we light the ramjets. Now, I should note that we've got uh, two overlapping SR-71 engines and ramjets. Basically, what I'm hypothesizing here is the existence of an engine that uh, is more ramjet than the SR-71 engines were. The SR-71 engines already had sort of a ramjet mode, and I just... We, we just have more ramjet to it. We can get up to Mach 6 before we get into serious problems. So the reason to have them overlap is and to have two engines instead of four basically is to reduce drag and so that's why I have them the way they are. Turns out overlapping them does not cause them to overheat or explode or anything. There's our current location off the coast of uh, South Carolina and Georgia and uh, here we are at our cruising velocity and uh, we're still below our cruising altitude of 30 kilometers. Cruising velocity for this is Mach 5.7 to 5.8 and the general limit is Mach 6.2. Current estimated range for this with minimal reserve fuel for diverting to another airport or something like that is 4,000 nautical miles. So that's what we're looking at here. This version carries 20 passengers and it's a little bit pricey. I worked it out and I think it's about $2,200 of fuel per passenger, which is pretty bad. I would like to perhaps increase the number of passengers it carries. Uh, and you can see right now we're not really using all of our thrust in our cruise. So maybe we have some more passenger capacity, but it's a matter of uh, if we add more mass to it, we're going to face a situation where we can't transition between the uh, jet mode and the ramjet mode very efficiently and uh, of course that's because we're currently technically using two different sets of engines if it was the same engine it probably wouldn't be as much of a problem of course it's typical for a plane to cruise without going full thrust there is another version of this uh, that is the Concordina 20 there's another Concordina that only has one SR-71 engine ramjet combination and that can carry uh, perhaps uh, 16 passengers, but it doesn't have the same range. It's uh, probably around 3,000 nautical miles. I did end up flying over populated areas including Cape Cod and here we are over New Brunswick and beside Nova Scotia. And so I, I apologize ahead of time for any disturbances I might have caused the residents. Uh, we are flying at 100,000 feet. So 30 kilometers on uh, cruising altitude at Mach 5.8 here. So I'm not entirely sure how much of a disturbance this would have caused. I don't actually know the propagation strength of sonic booms and uh, how to figure out how bad the situation with this might be. But we'll try and make sure that we're only going supersonic at high altitude. Uh, here, I ended up going past Mach 6, which I wasn't supposed to do, but it is uh, still a long flight and I wasn't paying much attention, but of course I try and throttle down, but we have to be careful about how we throttle down ramjets. If we throttle down too much, they, they might get into a cycle of uh, reducing velocity rapidly instead of in a measured fashion, but uh, after a little while, it was clear we weren't uh, getting rid of those heat indicators. That's why we have the, the limit to our to our speed of Mach 6.2, the overheating both of the engines and the body uh, basically occurs simultaneously and yeah so here we are over the Atlantic and I'm trying to lose velocity in a careful fashion and there we are back to Mach 5.8 still with plenty of range uh, to reach our destination. 
If you're wondering about the shock cone intake on the tail, that's actually from the earlier Concordina design with just a single SR-71 ramjet combo. And uh, maybe we can lose that. I think the side intakes are good enough for this purpose. I'm not entirely sure. Those side intakes are at least uh, lighter than other intakes tend to be. You can of course see our lift drag and all the other information on the side there. And here we are, we're going to shut down the ramjets. Actually, I throttle down, you see I throttle down, but you'll note that we still have a negative thrust. And so I decided to just shut down the engines entirely uh, to avoid that negative thrust, which seemed a little bit odd. Um, and besides, I'm trying to glide here for as long as possible. And if I get it right, I should be able to glide right into Heathrow Airport. And I'm going to use this plane to establish more airports around the globe using Kerbal Constructs and I, I hope to sort of make a proper flight simulator out of uh, Kerbal Space Program thanks to that, but we'll see. It seems like all that happens is that Kerbal Constructs creates a, another configuration file with the location of the airport and what statics were used. And so it might be easy to port uh, these new locations from one save to another, but I'm not sure. I'm using Kerbal Constructs own little uh, interface there to see the distance to Heathrow Airport. I oriented the runways in the correct direction and um, they're probably a little bit bigger than the real runways to be honest. Uh, there's not much else going on around here so I might as well have as big a runway as I feel I need. On one of the previous flights I also planned a flag at the airport location and you'll see that as an indic indicator up front there. I've got that selected as the target. And throughout this mission, you've been able to see the mission time. And so we are coming in a little bit over an hour and 20 minutes. Now, if you guys wouldn't mind some low-level sonic booms every now and again, I could probably cut that down. But uh, if we're going to limit our speeds to subsonic velocities, uh, then we're going to have to take a little bit of extra time when going over land. I might have to like go over the English Channel or something in order to cut down on the time we will see but here we are coming in for landing nice airport uh, none of those bumpy runway problems at the shuttle landing facility or here thanks to using Kerbal Constructs to place the runways and touchdown a bit of bounce I don't have any air brakes on this uh, so it's all just um, as it is and still uh, no big problems getting this uh, settled down here. Of course, once it's uh, without its fuel load, it's fairly light and glidable. And there we have it. So, that is the Concordina 20. Uh, 20 because it carries 20 passengers. We'll try and figure out ways to cut down cost, but uh, this is the status of the hypersonic liner development program. So, on that note, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.